So let's do a bit of work on the dough part of the donut. So this part, this kind of stuff. Uh, I'm not a donut expert, but I think this is uh, sort of like a cake type donut. So let's see how we build something like that. Let's get in here. So it's the structure we want to get right. So it's going to it's going to come in in this area here. So we're going to we're going to actually use this, but let's look at some of the noises we <clears throat> have at hand that we can use. Let's start with this moisture noise. Scale it up a bit. We will uh, use a directional blur. Let's blur it in some some kind of direction. And then we blend that with itself. We'll run this through a histogram scan. Something like that. So we're trying to cre create some of this uh, patchiness here. So this is a little bit uh, darker and this a little bit brighter. So we just need a noise that represents some of that. Can run this through a non-uniform uh, blur. And we set this to something a bit lower. We we'll do another non-uniform blur after this. We invert this one, just so we start. Now here we have from white to black, but inverting this one, we start to actually filling in uh, these in-between shapes here. But we set this to something a bit lower. Something like that. We can run this through a slope blur. Just to inflate these shapes a bit. But we do it something really low. You see that inflation effect, but we wanted something. Low like that. Blend this together here. And actually, here we just, if we hold shift on the keyboard, we just connect this one like this, and we can hook this one up like that. So we're just looking at the structure right now. That looks fine. We have like a little bit of uh, patchy une unevenness going on this guy. But we need a little bit of a detail noise uh, as well on here. So we do a, let's do a black and white spots. Let's try this too. Mm, it's a little bit, if you look at it from this view, we see the sort of, uh, cloudy shape on here so we want to even that out with a high pass grayscale yeah you see the difference there we can keep some of it if i go full you see the previous result but we want just a little more of the just a grain 
And we can hit space here to remove that tiling effect. And this one we'll do a slope blur. And crank this up. I'm going to do something really low here and we want to set it to negative so you can inflate the shapes by a positive value but you can sort of deflate the shapes with this negative value. You see we have this kind of structure that's uh, reminiscent of this kind of like um, type of pitting on here. Let's blend this on here. Perfect. Let's just do an overlay instead and we'll tone this down a lot. You can play around with this, add a little more of this other one here. Totally just eyeballing here. Uh, it looks all right. Uh, let's just adjust our roughness value here. Just our preview roughness value. We do have the same problem here, like where stuff is looks good here on the outside, but on the inside. You know, it gets uh, squashed, but uh, you won't see it that, that much. So there we have the structure. Uh, let's add a little bit more noise on this. We can add this fractal sum base, which is a really good noise function in here. You can just leave it at default settings and use another overlay. That looks pretty good. Now we can hook this one up again and it's going to look uh, weird. We don't want uh, structure where we have our uh, icing. So we'll do a non-uniform blur here. Sorry, it should be here. And we will use uh, this blur mask again. If we use a bit of it, we can get reuse some of this bump in this, but let's leave it sort of there somewhere. And maybe the icing is punching out too far. And now we can re-enable that thing again. Let's try using this as a mask instead. We'll use a histogram scan. Yeah, like that. Looks pretty good. Let's uh, let's just do another blend here. So we can have two different roughness values. So we can set one for our 
dough and one for our icing. Looks pretty good. Uh, let's just organize the graph a bit here. Uh, is that a frame? This is our dough. Put that somewhere up here. Let's see. So I, I do want to do a bit more work on the icing. So let's add another of these tile samplers. We'll do one and 96. And then just, we'll just eyeball in the size here. Something like that. And we do a disc. And set the scale to one. So we'll do scale random somewhere where it doesn't go too far off. Do a little bit of scale random. a few of these dots. We can do also this off offset a bit. Oh, offset doesn't do anything, sorry. something like this. Run this through the non-uniform blur. We want to create some more uh, kind of like these streaks as we did before to uh, get the look of there's there's sort of more layers of the icing sort of uh, pouring. I'll do invert here. i crank this up to A lot. We'll add our samples and we'll add our direction. So it should be 90. Let's tighten this up a bit. Blur this. And this one will just blend on top of our, uh, this part here. Put a transform uh, here as well to just sort of get it into position. We want most of the effect. Down here at the bottom. And like none sort of here in the center. That looks pretty good, so we'll just reuse this mask here so we don't accidentally get these blobs here. Okay. 
That is all right. We can add another layer of detail here. Let's add some cells. We can use the cells one. Let's do a lot. We'll just soften these with a blur node. Just fade it a bit, because it is a very sharp effect. You'll see here if we just... we we'll just blend this stuff on here. and subtract it's it's way too sharp and like mathematical but with this a uh, little bit of blur on it, it looks uh, a little more realistic let's see we do have some issue here let me see where that comes from it's um, apparently in this blur node here we just need to s set i think this this guy here doesn't tile which is forcing this one to no longer tile so we'll just set this one relative to parent and now that issue is gone there back to our little uh, crackling effect here Oops, that's not what I wanted. I just want to move that node. And we can put a warp on this. And just add a little bit of a pearly noise here. Let's break that up a tiny bit. We could also use this one. Well, let's just exaggerate first to see what that is doing. I think that might be better even. Move some stuff out of the way here. The only thing I want to add now is a few sprinkles. Maybe just tone down this effect a tiny bit. So let's add a tile sampler. And let's add a shape, shape node. We can use this, uh, uh, let's see, where is it? Capsule here. Point 0.5 looks all right. Hook it up to the tile sampler, set that to pattern input. Uh, I guess 16 by 16 is fine. Do a bit of position random. Point 0.3 is typically good. Uh, based on experience, some of the values above you see it starts poking into each other. I'm going to do a rotation random max. And then we want to use, uh, we want to create a mask for this. So first, let's just blend these on. Uh, 
And let's grab our um, non-uniform blur node. And we'll grab this, uh, this blur node up here. Doesn't really matter which one we grab. So we set this one from above, actually from below. Dial that in a bit. Now we hook up the mask. Uh, let's see, mask map threshold. Actually, we can it's just just this one. So this asset was a little bit of a gimmick asset. Uh, obviously, a tiling texture on a donut will get, you know, a little bit bigger sprinkles here uh, on the outside and smaller on the inside. But we can sort of uh, dial it in with uh, with this mask where they show up. Something like that. 